if you have FIPS, uh, ha if you have FIPS client hashing libraries like other than that called this with NSS, when you turn on FIPS compliance in NSS, it disables MD5 for people. Right, so you can't even use it at all, even inside another the, the channel. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Exactly. Uh, so that is probably the bigger problem, and, uh, and this is this is a problem, by the way, that the entire radius community faces. This, yeah. this is not uh, specific to our implementation. So uh, this is something that we hope the the radius community will work out. Uh, we're just using standard radius. Nothing special about what we're doing. So when the radius community solves. Because I work for a network park for vendor, right? So we just have to support that to support radius is the same for so many things that we never really do. So right. you have half of us, half of the world is moving to try to get back at it as much as possible. Right. Right. Then you have the even larger locking because there's no open, real wide open source version of a DACX server. So what's happening is it's just people are the newer versions are shifting off of radius on the LDAP and just using security LDAP because it's it's the best. Right. But, I hope the health raise community is taking ahead of the line. There is there is a proposal. There is a proposal to um, to have a new version of radius as a protocol. So the problem is is that the actual wire protocol specifies MD5 and only allocates in the header the, the exact number of bytes that MD5 requires, right? So the attempt to use any other hashing algorithm uh, just doesn't actually take into the wire protocol. Uh, there is there is um, discussion going on around actually being able to replace that in, in a new variant of the protocol, which is probably, it's probably my preferred solution. Uh, so radius is just so widely deployed yeah. that replacing it with something that's completely different is going to be cool. Is probably in the place, but could you even just piggyback off the DSA attribute and just as it? Well, one of the things that yeah. one of the things that's been talked about. So there is a um, there's a set of vendor attributes you can use to define uh, accept or accept encryption. In which case, the authenticator field in the radius header uh, it, you just basically put right into it, and and that would work. That would work. You could actually have the same wire protocol at that point. So it's being talked about actively in the radius community. I think a solution will emerge, and when that solution emerges, we will get it. Yeah. So that that's that is the eventual goal here. So we are not currently FIPS compliant, but we we would hope to be when they is. Um, so the free OTP project, uh, just to recap, we have an app. Uh, the code is available at the link there. Um, there's currently no documentation, which I hope to solve in the, in the next few weeks. Um, and we hope to be pushing it to the App Store relatively soon. Uh, iOS will probably come uh, when I get around to learning ChatGPT, and uh, and then other platforms based upon based upon command or contributions really. Uh, contribution is probably the most important thing. Uh, the key point here is that you don't have to use the free OTP project uh, to use uh, support or to use free IP to back implementation. This is something we are doing uh, really just to, uh, to 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 allow people to have no lock in any layer of stack. Uh, but this piece is actually interchangeable. So if you want to use your own client, go ahead. It's, it's all standard, uh, open standards. So anybody can implement them. So you can use any client which supports the open standards. Uh, let's talk quickly about upcoming work. Uh, pre ipa 3.4 is going to hopefully land in Fedora 20. Uh, in Fedora 19, we did the first, uh, we did the first implementation of this. Uh, this is the implementation of all the plumbing work underneath. Uh, so you can actually, if you know the magic bits of, of configuration stick in LDAP, you can turn this all on and test it. Uh, what we're doing now for the Fedora 20 work is we're actually building the management UI and CLI on top of that. Uh, and so that work will be, will be coming up very soon, and we will hopefully have that land in Fedora 20. Um, one of the targets we have for free IP or free IPA 3.5 is, uh, and Fedora 21 is a centralized service policy. And what this allows you to do is, is currently you can only turn on uh, multi-factor authentication on a, on a global user basis, right? So you can say, I want this user to be two-factor authenticated. Yeah. 
he's going to be too back up in the kitchen no matter what he does. What we want to do is we want to say that this user can authenticate with either a single factor or a set or a multi factor authentication, uh, but then some services will deny him access if he does not have the multi factor authentication. Right? So you can use a single factor when you log in, you know, just browsing around at work, but then when you want to access something that's secure at that point, you would then you would then have to upgrade to a multi factor. Uh, multi -factor system. And, and that uh, that work is ongoing. Uh, this is uh, this is going to be related to the, to the next one, uh, which is authentication service levels. And this is actually standards work that's going to be done uh, in the Kerberos and IETF communities. And this is around what, what we want to do is we want to uh, actually encapsulate in the ticket that's given from, uh, from the Kerberos from KDC, we want to put a, a set of strings in there that identifies uh, what type of authentications were used to obtain this ticket? That way, services uh, in, in the first case, in the first case, all the work is happening inside the KDC. So, if you have a single factor ticket and and you are TGT and you want to authenticate to another service which requires multi-factor authentication, the KDC will just refuse to issue the ticket. Uh, this is this is helpful for centralizing policy. Uh, but it's not the best user experience because the user is just going to get a policy-based error when they try to get a ticket. And it would be nicer for the application to be able to actually display, like imagine a web app, right? It would be nice for a web app to say, you've authenticated, but you actually need multi-factor authentication, which is why we're denying your request. Right? This is a really nice system that tells users specifically what's going on. Uh, but that work requires us then uh, to update the data in the ticket itself which the service can receive. So we will still grant the tickets, but the, the ticket will then contain you know, that this was a, a single factor or this was multi-factor authentication, and the service will be able to uh, permit or deny access. The, the other thing that this, that this second piece, or this third piece provides uh, is the ability, even within a single service, to support a single factor or multi-factor. And imagine in the case of a web server where a certain set of URLs require multi-factor authentication, but another set of URLs will require single factor. So um, th that would not be supported in this second piece, but would be supported in the third. Uh, when this will actually land, we don't know, because this is going to depend on standards working on ETF. Uh, and that can either be very short or very long, uh, depending on the voices that people have uh, in that standards process. Please help us test this. Uh, this, is, this is really, really crucial if you have a third-party radio service. This is the piece we have not uh, we have not been able to test. So if you've got radius servers running, uh, please please spin this up. I've given you a shortened URL link. Uh, what's behind this is just the, the data from the uh, Fedora uh, Free IPA two factor authentication test today. Uh, and this is this is doable all with Fedora nineteen. Uh, so just basically go to that link and it will contain all sorts of information uh, to test and. Uh, and then please contact me or the IPA list. Uh, if you have any questions, we're glad to help you in any way to get this test as widely as possible. That's all the material I have for today. Uh, are there any questions? I have one more. Yeah. And this is probably not exactly related, but uh, the challenge I have is so we have, you talk about moving users over in pieces, right? We have some users that we need to support two factor, some users that don't need two factor, but still also authenticate. And then we have some users that have to use a uh, piece of a certificate, right? right? And we can do it with PK. Yeah, with uh, I mean, PK Net or how you say PK Event. Okay, so, so the idea is you would just uh, hand off to uh, something like a dog tag server that would handle that CA thing. This is also work that is on. This is also work that is ongoing. Uh, this is this is work that's going on in parallel, and it, it, uh, you use an X five hundred nine certificate to obtain a Kerberos ticket. Um, this this work is already upstream, uh, has been for a while in MIT Kerberos. Our current work is to, as a part of. So this piece right here, uh, you have to have server-side and client-side support for, for multi-factor authentication for OTP. And one of the things we did here, we had a problem with MIPK 5 which uh, 
basically there was there was no easy way to tell an application complex data. Uh, in, in the case of OTP, we have complex data. So uh, we couldn't do before in the common client side was just simply ask for a password. Uh, but when you have multiple tokens with different vendors uh, or, or you know, even different serial numbers or whatever, and you have to distinguish between them, you actually have to do something complex on the client. So we added a framework to do this complex stuff, and, and currently we're porting peak and init to support that same mechanism. Uh, that will allow something like SSSB to have a menu that says which authentication type do you want to do and, and what credentials do you want to use. This is of something confusing. Is that you know we, we make a couple of very basic uh, job of GUI apps to all manage. Mm -hmm. And so you know the device side is easy. Uh, on our device side, we support back apps, radio, cell app uh, for authentication. It's just a piece of hardware. Right. But on the user standpoint, it's very hard. Yeah, now it's like, okay, um, uh, do I essentially, do I try to use the local uh, service running on the, on the system to use the supplicant for, for PCI built into it, or do I try to build that function into the application yes. and let it lever something in the back side? And the client side is the really, really hard piece. Oh, it's a wrap point. Uh, we, we spent, I was hired uh, over two years ago now, I think when I started working on this. We uh, did one short project for the last 16 months, but then uh, after that, we spent just about a year just on the client side piece. It was a lot of work. And it is hard enough just on the Red Hat uh, you know, desktop client, client itself. Yes. Okay, so you, you support that there, but then say in different parts of the government, all of a standardized in the Schlumbacher client that's now owned by HIV and that's proprietary, and you might not really want to operate. Yep. yep. So we, we should have. Uh, the, the, all the building blocks in place for a, a good client side environment. The client side authentication environment still has to be built, but all of the phone is there at this point. Um, the, uh, the nice thing is that this is flexible. Uh, this is a, we designed a flexible management mechanism here. So the same mechanism can be used for OTP, can be used for PKing, it can be used for passwords, it can be used for, for all of the above. Um, it still requires the, the using of the libcaries by library directly. Um, we are, we're, in the authentication world, we're just kind of still stuck with PAM. And everyone feels that pain, and no one has been. That I think that's probably the best solution, or the best thing. Um, how we are dealing with that is that we have uh, the SSSD, uh, which is, I don't know if you've seen that or not, as part of the it's within this, it's not directly free IPA, but it's within this, the scope of the free IPA project. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of the client side piece of the free IPA project. Uh, and the SSSD provides <coughs> a PAM plugin to be able to handle the PAM side, uh, while at the same time uh, it, it uses all of the libraries directly. So it can have a much better experience. And it, it also uh, pulls in all the policy related stuff, where right? it, it provides not just authentication, but also the identity. Uh, so you, you know you have a, the same UID everywhere. You have the same authentication and policy. Uh, that that's the client side piece of SSSD. So we're we're handling that there, uh, and the SSSD is sort of uh, bypassing the, the PAM problem. Uh, the PAM problem is still going to exist uh, for things like um, for things like SSH, which is just a tough nut to crack. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> fortunately. The way that we are deploying this is that you are going to get your two-factor ticket from Kerberos, and you can, and once you've authenticated with two factors, you now have a single sign-on that you can use everywhere, and that Kerberos ticket is also pretty widely supported at this point. So, uh, so once you have that ticket for your two factors, you don't have to necessarily retrofit two-factor off into everything else, which is which is a helpful solution. Any other questions? Thank you everybody for coming today. Um, I have uh, a demo of the OTP app. If you'd like to see that, uh, you just come down and I'll show you. So, thank you all for coming today. Pretty amazing how that company really kind of lost when they're keeping active. Oh, okay. It's even more amazing when you think about the defense contractor are still using them. You yes. wonder how much backing you'll have to put on the end. It's crazy for a lot of companies.